Welcome to the first episode of Love, Marriage, and Finances, a YouTube series about merging your finances with your partner. My name is Sid Misra, and I'm a certified financial planner professional who is passionate about financial education and helping people make better financial decisions. Before you merge your money and before you say I do, you need to have money conversations with your partner to make sure that you're both on the same page. You want to be on the same page about how you're both going to view and interact with money. Money plays such a big part in our lives that if we're not on the same page or don't have the tools to properly communicate the differences that we have, it can lead to conflict and eventually divorce. And I just want to reiterate that this series is not here to scare you, but it is here to empower you with the tools necessary to have these important conversations. A good place to start is having discussions about you and your partner's relationship with money. Let's get into it. So the first step in merging finances with your partner is being transparent about not just your money, but how you actually view money. What are your money beliefs? How do you both view money? Because this is going to be a big driver in your behavior. It drives how we act and react to things in life. So do you and your partner view money as a tool that can help you? Or do you view it as a curse, something that is an unobtainable resource that you can never quite get enough of? Is it a source of happiness and success? Or is it more a source of conflict and stress? And a good thing to talk about with your partner is your family's history with money. Because again, our childhood, how we grew up with money, our parents and guardians' attitudes around that are going to be big drivers in how we view money and how we interact with it. We are, in a large part, products of our environment. So this is definitely important to have conversations about. Did your parents or guardians talk to you about money? And what did they talk to you about money? Was it something that caused stress for the family? Was it something that they fought about? Did they have conversations about how to earn money and how to keep money, right? There's one thing about earning money but there's also another thing about keeping it and managing it and building wealth. Did you have those conversations or was money something that you guys never really talked about? Many families don't have meaningful money conversations and they don't give their children and the next generation the tools necessary to help manage money and be part of the financial system, which we all are. And this is a big part of why financial literacy is so important. How do we learn about money and our relationship with money and the financial system? And I also think it's important to recognize that if you and your partner want to have kids and want to be parents yourselves and be guardians over someone, how do you both want to approach financial education with the next generation? What tools and knowledge do you want to pass on to them? This is a great time to have those conversations to really dive down into our money psychology and, and how we interact with it. And taking it a step further from the family side, you know, what does wealth mean to you? What does money mean to you? And in these conversations, going deeper is going to be important, right? What does wealth mean to both of you? Is it the outward shows of wealth, like a big house, fancy cars, nice jewelry and clothing and expensive trips? Or for many people, it's just living within your means, but making sure that you're not only enjoying life right now, but thinking about the future and planning for the future. I've had this conversation with my partner about what we value, what does wealth mean to us? And a lot of it is the experiences that we can have with the people that we love, spending time with those people and really owning our time, being able to do the things that we want to without worrying about money. And to get there, we'll take planning and a lot more of these conversations. So again, this is just the beginning of a long process, just like your marriage where you're putting in that work consistently. This will also be something that you consistently work on. And it's important to have these conversations because you want to make sure that your partner and you view money not exactly in the same way, but are on the same page about how you guys view money and what is important to you in your lives. Marriage itself is tough. Relationships are tough. And that can be made even tougher if the two of you are not on the same page about how you want to use your money and your financial resources, what matters to you and why. Having those differing views just adds more friction and can definitely make things harder. And again, have these conversations, drill down a little bit deeper. What do you want your life to look like? Do you value experiences over things? 
Are you more of a spender and saver? How do you view money in terms of planning for our long-term goals and the life that we want? That can also be taking care of family, caretaking for parents and siblings. And these are conversations that you want to have now so that you're both on the same page about what you want your financial resources to do for you. Now, once you've had these deep conversations about money, your viewpoints on it, what you want to see happen, the goals in your life, you can actually start going into the actual numbers of your finances. What do your current finances look like? What is your salary? What is your cash flow look like? How much is coming in every month? How much is leaving out for expenses? Do you get paid on a regular basis? or is it more irregular, right? These are things that we want to know when we're merging finances. We wanna know how to be able to handle expenses and how to be able to use our resources appropriately. How about the assets and liabilities, right? What do you own and what do you owe? When you get married to someone, you may be taking on the assets that they have and also the liabilities that they have as well. It's important to put all of that on the table so you understand what you're getting yourself into and what your partner is getting themselves into, right? And when we talk about debt, we wanna make sure we understand what kind of debt we have. If someone has a mortgage and they own a home, okay, that could be good debt if they can afford that. If they have a student loan debt because they wanted to get a higher education, that's something that we can take a look at that can be good debt as well. But something like credit card debt throws up some red flags, right? Is this person an overspender? Why do they have a high credit card balance? And do they have a plan to pay this off eventually? These are the things that we want to know about our partner before we actually sign the paperwork and, and make it official. And don't forget to talk about credit score. This is something that gets forgotten about, but credit plays such a huge part in our lives and our score dictates how expensive financing can be for us. So if we have good credit, it costs us less money to finance things like a mortgage or a, or a car loan. If we don't have good credit or our partner doesn't have good credit and we're applying for these things together, it may make it more expensive for us to get that car loan or get that house, right? And as a reminder, again, we're not merging anything just yet, right? We want to put all of this out there and be transparent so that both sides, both parties have an understanding of where we're coming from and where we're approaching this marriage to start it off. And once this is out there, it allows us to have further conversations about the places that we may not align when it comes to our money psychology and our ultimate goals. We want to have these tough conversations now because it doesn't get any easier when you sign the paperwork and say, I do. It makes it much more difficult. You've combined finances and making those decisions as a group, as a couple, is much harder if you haven't done this work beforehand. This is an important first step in merging two different lives, two different sets of finances together and making them hopefully work as one. One towards the goals that you've set out for and the way that you want to live your life. Don't skip out on this part. Every home needs a strong foundation and your financial and marital home needs a strong foundation to support itself. So I know I just gave you a lot of information, but I wanna give you some actionable takeaways that you can use in the real world with your partner. Number one is make sure you're having the transparent conversations about not just the financial numbers that you have, you know, the inflows and outflows, the assets and liabilities that you may have, but about the money psychology, the ideals and ideas behind the behavior that you have and your partner has. Make sure to talk about your family history with money and how do they actually view money as a tool or as a curse. That transparency, that knowledge is gonna help you build that foundation that you can use going forward. Talk about what does wealth look like to you? What do you guys wanna see happen with your life? Resources are finite, we can't do everything. So what is important? What can we prioritize? and what really matters to us. We wanna put our effort and our resources towards that because that is what we want our life to look like. And if these things don't align with your partner, talk about that, figure out why, figure out are there any areas that we can work together, compromise, because if these issues are not taken care of now, it doesn't get any easier once you're married. And then once all of that is done, once you've had conversations about family history with money, the, the money ideas that you have and the psychology behind that, how you want your life to look like, then you can start talking about actual numbers. What do you own? What do you owe? How much do you make? What is your cash inflow and outflow for the month? 
Do you have any debt? Things like that, right? Getting into the actual nitty gritty of the numbers. But the psychological conversations have to come before that. Those are so important to understand how people make decisions and if you and your partner are actually aligned with what you want to see happen in life. This transparency allows us to be honest and upfront about how we think about money, where we currently are, and the things that we want to accomplish. So make sure you're having these tough conversations, make sure you're putting in the work to get on the same page about money. This is setting a good foundation for the financial and marital house that you're gonna build. So stay tuned for the next episode of Love, Marriage, and Finances, where we're gonna talk about how you actually merge your finances together. Not just in theory, but in practice.